parts of the south and east, easily seeing temperatures up to 12, maybe 13 Celsius. But there's the colder air, single digits and feeling even colder with the wind across Scotland. And the colder air spreads south for uh, Friday. Some patchy rain in the southwest showers coming into the northeast. They'll be wintry in nature, some sleet and snow even to lower levels. For many though, Friday will just be a, a bright, crisp day, but uh, you will notice that drop in temperatures, single figures, and feeling even colder in the east with the wind. Who is it? We're here for the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. My <laughs> CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. Headliners, you don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us 11pm every night on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Tired of the usual focus-tested, pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. There's only three people you can trust in life. Your doctor, your lawyer, and your nana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. So join me, Nana Aqueer, at 3 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday where we discuss the biggest topics of the weekend. Be ready for battle. Can you be quiet? <laughs> what is this? Is it, it, you... <laughs> it's my new teeth. your new teeth. I don't, I don't bite. Well, not without a good reason. Always honest, always fun. Every weekend at 3 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening and welcome to Patrick Christie's Tonight. Yeah, Jeremy from Accounts put the nation into a coma this afternoon with his autumn statement, but we will liven it up for you because Dane Pretty Patel is on for unvarnished reaction and I will be debating whether the work shy should have their benefits stopped. There's a rumble outside the jungle as ITV's Lorraine Kelly body shames Nigel Farage. Get the fish you deserve. Yeah. I don't know what I've done to deserve this, but there we go. Kim Woodburn will strike back on that. She's fired up and ready to go. Don't miss it. And Home Secretary James Cleverley is in trouble for allegedly calling a Labour MP's town a sh the hole. Why are 34% of children in my constituency living in poverty? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. OK, and should Britain ban sex workers. Germany is considering it over fears that they have become the brothel of Europe. It's a lively show tonight, and here to sprinkle some more sparkle on it are my panel, all woman, Christine Hamilton, the everyman, Adam Brooks, and, well, whatever he is, Matthew Laza. There we go. It's Patrick Christie's tonight, and it's live.
James cleverly denies that, by the way. Now, email me right now, gbviews at gbnews.com. What do you make of Lorraine Kelly body shaming Nigel Farage? And should the work shy have benefits stopped? We're on at GB News on Twitter. We'll get going after your headlines. Patrick, thank you. And our top story tonight, a raft of tax cuts and benefits increases aimed at making 27 million people better off was announced by the Chancellor today. In the biggest change outlined in his autumn statement, Jeremy Hunt said national insurance will be cut from 12 to 10 per cent. And the triple lock on pensions will be kept, taking the state pension up by 8.5 per cent to more than £220 a week. Taxes on alcohol will be frozen until August next year, meaning no increase in duty on beer, cider, wines or spirits. Now, the mother of a 28-year-old woman shot dead in Liverpool has labelled her daughter's killers monsters, as they today were jailed for life for the murder. Ashley Dale was murdered when James Witham forced his way into her home and opened fire with a machine gun. He and three other men were handed life sentences with minimum terms of between 41 and 47 years to, to serve. Witham and co-defendants Joseph Piers, Niall Barry and Sean Zeiss were all found guilty of murder and conspiracy to murder Miss Dale's partner. And the hometown of four teenage boys who died in North Wales has cancelled tonight's Christmas light switch on out of respect for the families involved. Jevon Hurst, Harvey Owen, Will Fitchett, Hugo Morris all had set off on a camping trip to Snowdonia, but their bodies were recovered yesterday after a car was found overturned and partially submerged in water. North Wales Police says it appears to have been a tragic accident. And a man and a woman in their 30s have died after a migrant boat capsized off the French coast this evening. French and British maritime agencies were called to reports of a boat in the water in difficulties about eight miles from the port of Boulogne at around 5pm. French officials say 60 people were crammed on board the small boat and it had begun sinking. Some other migrants were taken to Dungeness in Kent. Israel's Prime Minister said tonight the Red Cross will be allowed to visit all remaining hostages in Gaza. That comes after Israel agreed a four-day pause in fighting beginning tomorrow morning. Fifty hostages will be freed by the terror group Hamas in exchange for 150 Palestinians held in Israeli jails. And here in the UK, the Foreign Secretary David Cameron said the truce was a crucial step towards providing humanitarian relief to Gaza as well. And some more detail on that breaking news we brought you about an hour ago from the US-Canada border. All four international border crossings in western New York have been locked down following a major vehicle explosion on the US-Canada border. It happened at the Rainbow Bridge crossing. That's near Niagara Falls. American media still reporting two people have lost their lives. The FBI has described the situation as very fluid. So to just recap on that for you, all four international border crossings between the US and Canada in western New York have closed. And I can tell you that the US, sorry, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, has said in the last few moments that the authorities are taking the situation extraordinarily seriously. His words will bring you more on that as we get it. Now, the Prime Minister and his wife welcomed South Korea's president and the First Lady to number 10 in London today. Yoon suk Yul and Rishi Sunak signed a new long-term agreement covering defence and technology. The deal covers improved military cooperation between the UK and South Korea, focusing primarily on countering smuggling in the East China Sea. On TV, online, DAB Plus Radio and the TuneIn app. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. The Dole Man Award goes to Jeremy from Accounts, who single-handedly caused a spike in NHS admissions today as his boring autumn statement puts us all into a coma. 
Did you have your personality bypassed on the NHS, Jeremy, or did you go private? That's what I want to know. But despite being about as engaging as a rainy Sunday trudging around a slough industrial estate looking for the right bit of guttering with a marital partner you no longer love, Jeremy Hunt did at least take an axe to some tax. And this is what the Tories need to keep reminding people. At least he's not the other Jeremy. I see... I see the Leader of the Opposition shaking his head. In fact, in fact, we do have something in common. Both he and I wanted to make a Jeremy Prime Minister. <laughs> in, in, in fairness, his party and mine are probably equally relieved we failed. <laughs> but whereas this Jeremy is growing the economy, his Jeremy would have crashed it. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the kind of gag that Ant and Deck scriptwriters would call the joke of the century. It is flipping rich for the Labour Party to come out and try to present themselves as the responsible party for government at the moment. It doesn't really matter how many times Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeve sticks a high-vis jacket on and turns up wearing a hard hat at a building site. The fact is, Labour is split over the Middle East and always will be. They've bankrupted Britain in the past and will quite possibly do it again. And Tony Blair started the whopping great big immigration nightmare that we've got today, which Keir Starmer would almost definitely, in my view, continue to make worse. Look, let's just get down to basics on this, OK? Some good stuff from Hunt. Business tax cuts... Alcohol duty frozen, national insurance cut by 2% and the pensions triple lock upgraded and secured. He also said that the work shy taking benefits will have to find work within 18 months, do a forced work placement or have their benefits stopped. This is a good thing. Every year we sign off over 100,000 people onto benefits with no requirement to look for work because of sickness or disability. That waste of potential is wrong economically and wrong morally. Yeah. For far too long, people of working age have been scrounging off the state and making you and I pay their way so they can sit inside all day watching a taxpayer-funded flat-screen telly with their feet up while we all go to work. But being a complete and utter wet lettuce, he obviously didn't have the bottle to cut inheritance tax in the same statement where he's talking about stopping benefits, despite also announcing that he's increasing the living wage. To be fair, the most exciting thing that happened in the chamber today had nothing to do with Jeremy from accounts. The new Home Secretary was accused of calling one MP's constituency a sh hole. Why are 34% of children in my constituency living in poverty? Yeah. <laughs> James Cleverly is adamant that that wasn't him who said it, and to be fair, I really don't think it was. But that didn't stop the Labour MP coming back for more. He was seen and heard to say, because it's a shithole. <gasps> I know he is denying being the culprit, but, Madam Deputy Speaker, the audio is clear and has been checked and checked and checked again. There is no doubt that these comments shame the Home Secretary, this rotten government, and the Tory party. OK, so, fair play, Jeremy. The budget was pff, fine, I suppose. The Tories really, really need to start hammering the Labour Party on how much worse things could be under their leadership. They've got to go on the attack more and not just bring up Corbyn all the time. But the winner for me is this. Tell people we'll stop your benefits if you can work and don't. We've got to get people off their backsides and into the economy. Now, before I get my panel's reaction on this, let me bring in Tory MP for Dudley North and the member of the New Conservatives, Marco Longhi. Marco, thank you very, very much. I mean, look, some good stuff from Jeremy in there. My concern is that this is all going to pale in significance because tomorrow we're going to be talking about record net migration figures and that might take the gloss off any of the good stuff. What do you make of all of this? Well, I don't want to get into the debate on net migration because you know exactly how I would feel about that. And it was good to bump into you this morning on Lambeth Bridge, by the way. Um, so, look, yes, I think for all the reasons you stated earlier, it was actually a good statement. And you know I'm the type of MP who doesn't hold back and I say it as it is. However, as a new Conservative, I would have liked to have seen more. I'd have liked to have seen it more exciting. And to be fair, I suppose, to 
uh, the Chancellor, you can't do everything at the same time. And we will obviously have a budget come the spring. So let's see. Let's see what he's keeping up his sleeve for then. What I would have liked to have seen is look at that very engine for growth, which we all recognise are the small and medium enterprises. And I would have loved to have seen the VAT threshold taken up to 250,000. I think it's about 85,000 right now, but that disincentivizes businesses from actually wanting to go and grow their business, employ more people, because otherwise, if they trip into above 85,000 turnover, that means that they have to start charging everybody VAT on top of all of the paperwork that that adds to their very small businesses. So I'd have, I'd have, I'd have loved to have seen uh, VAT thresholds changed. I believe it's not inflationary in any way. And the same thing goes for IR35, because that really discourages uh, the self-employed. We are now 800,000 down uh, on, uh, on since uh, IR35 came in and we keep talking about them they are being the engine of the economy so i'm really hoping i'm really hoping that this is something the chancellor will look at come the next budget okay and you're absolutely fine with the idea of telling people who can work but won't that they've got 18 months to find a job otherwise we'll do a forced work placement for you and if you don't take that your benefits stop presumably then you're out on your backside uh, absolutely. As, as long as we keep those safeguards for, for the people who absolutely do need uh, welfare as, uh, as a safety net rather than a way of life, which is what we're talking about. OK. Well, one final one very quickly with you, Marco, if that's all right. Do you not think the Tories have got to go on the attack more here now and really be highlighting how much worse things could be under Labour? Because you've got 13 years of rule behind you, which technically means now everything's your fault, unfortunately, really. So have you not got to go on the offence now and say, look, this is what Labour would be like, this is what they're saying, this is what, you know, and really stick it to them and not just keep bringing up Corbyn? I, I completely agree. We need to sell ourselves an awful lot more, uh, notwithstanding uh, the difficulties we've had as a party uh, who's, that's been in government uh, well, fully in government, I would say, for eight years, not the 13, because we were shackled by the Lib Dems for the first five of those, as you know. Mm. Uh, but yes, you're completely right. We need to go out on the attack. We need to sell ourselves an awful lot more. But we also need to grow the economy a lot, a lot more quickly and, and do an awful lot more that you will see in the new Conservatives' plan for the economy. All right, look, Marco, always a pleasure, and hopefully I'll bump into you on Lambeth Bridge again someday soon. It's Marco Longy there of the new Conservatives and the MP for Dudley North. Now... Joining me this evening, of course, I have my wonderful panel, but Jeremy Hunt has announced a benefits crackdown. He cut national insurance by 2%, but the tax burden is still set to hit a record high. Was the Chancellor's autumn statement radical enough? And here they are, author and broadcaster Christine Hamilton. We've got businessman and activist Adam Brooks and former Labour Party advisor Matthew Laza. Christine, if you can work and you don't work, you've got to get off the sick and you've got to you have a benefit stop, no? Absolutely. I mean, I wish it had happened before. You need carrot and stick, and people like that need the stick, I'm afraid. But what I was disappointed in, there wasn't enough carrot for other people. I mean, I would like to have seen... Um, what's going to happen now is because of this famous fiscal drag, which everybody knows about, more and more people are going to be pushed into higher rate taxes. What happens when these people, they come off their backsides, they do work, the enterprising, aspiring ones are going to want to do more. If they're going to be taxed a billion, they're not going to bother. I would like to have seen, certainly, um, as Marco said, the VAT threshold reduced for small businesses, mm. but also the income tax threshold reduced. It's utterly absurd that as you push up a little bit more with your income, it's all taken away from you. And I think Rishi Sunak... I, I, I may have... Uh, the figures that I've got here I find extraordinary. The borrowing forecast in March was £115 billion. I mean, it can't get much worse than that, can it? It's now been reduced to £98 billion, And I seem to think that... Ali, uh, that um, Rishi seems to think in his Alice in Wonderland world that he's got... Yeah a spare 17 spend billion to spend. He hasn't. He needs to right. cut spending. There was nothing about that at all. Oh, all right. I, I remember just one final thing. I remember Nigel Lawson's budget in 1988. It was so radical. The House of Commons nearly had palpitations and he reduced the top rate from 60 to 40%. That's what we need. We need something... They are in the okay. doldrums. They're not going to win. They need something really exciting. Mm. Look, Adam, do you feel as though, you know, at the moment we've got too many people whose lives are too easy sitting at home doing nothing and, and yeah. getting the gyro. I mean, that started with Tony Blair, Gordon Brown. It became a lifestyle choice if you wanted to be on benefits. You, you could live on benefits. Again, as someone said earlier, um, benefits should be there for those that genuinely need it. Those that 
have hard times, you know, those that aren't so lucky, but it should never be a choice. Benefits has been too easy to get over the last mm. 10 years in this country. And again, people, there, there are towns in, in this country where many of them choose to live the benefit lifestyle okay. because they get so much. And then All their right. children right. follow their Matthew, lifestyle. Matthew, Matthew I'm going to come back so to you because, on. look, the inbox, there are many people claiming benefits because they know how to play the system, says yeah. Betty. Thank you very much, Betty. GBviews at gbnews.com. Uh, Matthew, th at least at least Hunt's getting stuff on the work shy. Well, I mean, Adam's right uh, that people should be uh, in work and not on benefit if they can. And that's why, under Labour, millions were taken off welfare and put into work and unemployment uh, uh, fell significantly. Uh, but this is, this is one of those typical Tory announcements, which sounds uh, uh, engaging, which gets people fired up because of the headline, but the detail, is, the devil is very much in the detail because this is all about taking 200,000 people and rather than giving them sick notes and signing them off work, it's giving them treatment uh, while they remain either in work or, or seeking work. Well, one of the biggest things you can do to get people welfare off work is get the NHS waiting list, which are currently at record levels cut. People who are waiting for a hip operation, they're limited in what jobs they can go and do. And yet we see more people waiting in pain than ever before, and it has knock-on effects. So, yeah, look, Labour is the party of work. It's in the title. That we NHS, always have been. That NHS waiting list isn't going to get any smaller as and when we see the net migration numbers announced tomorrow, which are anticipated to hit 700 Another Tory failure. Uh, well, there you go, but would it be worse under Labour? And this no, is it would the be thing. lower. This, well, would it, really? Would it? How? Well, I mean, first of all, uh, 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 which, bit, which bit of the Tory failure on migration are we talking about? We're talking about uh, legal or illegal uh, uh, Legal migration. now. Legal tomorrow. It's legal. And you haven't got an answer for yes, that, I've have you? Got legal mi on, 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 legal right. on legal migration, you need to close the loopholes, you need to process things properly, you need to send people who overstay their visas home. So you're None of which is happening. you're going to people and stamp them all into this country. Absolutely That's not, Adam. Do. That's a tabloid myth. It's all, oh, all right. It's a spicy start to the but, show. We but, love but, it. But, Quickly, two quickly. seconds. Going back to the economy, the Tories need to show that they're going to be conservatives. They need to mm. differentiate themselves from Labour. At the moment, they're just still right. on, the on the tax cut, let's just remember that the, by freezing the tax thresholds, which he did again today, it's dragged more people into tax yeah. and he's given the equivalent of a 10p. It's like a burglar who ro robs your house, steals everything in your house, yeah. and then you find a couple of things he's dropped on the, uh, on the way out and you're meant to say thank to you. To be fair, if Jeremy Hunt was a burglar, it looks like he'd just give it back. <laughs> you know, I think he'd just wander in. Oh, actually, two days later, you get a letter of apology and something really expensive in the post. Now, still to come, as Meghan Markle revisits a, a feminist climate change group for the first time since fleeing the firm, has the Duchess made the world significantly better over the last four years through her activism? We've been taking a look at what she's actually done. Angela Levin picks apart the Sussex's charity work shortly, but this is good. Next, in The Clash, ITV's Lorraine Kelly has sparked uproar after cruelly mocking Nigel Farage's, well, face, really. You get the face you deserve. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm, there's a lot I could say about that, but I can't, can I? I can't. Now, TV firebrand Kim Woodburn has a few choice words for Lorraine when she goes head-to-head -head with actress Jenny Barney. I'm reliably informed it kicked off between the pair last time they were on, so they better be on the best behaviour this time. I've seen a tick. Who is it? We're here for the show. Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour, with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. 
I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens with our team of dedicated journalists across the UK. We're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. Tired of the usual focus-tested, pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Well, Royal Commentator Angela Levin is coming up shortly, but now it's time for The Clash. Now, has the mask slipped for ITV presenter Lorraine Kelly? Here she is, discussing our very own Nigel Farage on I'm a Celeb. Hey, what, 59? He's got plenty of years he? ahead of him. Maybe he wants to get going again. Is he only 59? I thought he was a hell of a lot older than that. That's astonishing. <laughs> Just shows you... You get the face you deserve, yeah. frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. OK. Well, considering Lorraine has spoken in the past about her struggles with weight and promoting body positivity, her recent dig at Nigel seems a little bit out of character, dare I say it, a little bit nasty. And can you imagine the reaction if that had been a male person discussing a female contestant? So tonight I am asking, should Lorraine Kelly apologise for body shaming Nigel Farage and saying he's got the face he deserves? Let me know your thoughts. Email me, gbviews at gbnews.com. Tweet me at gbnews. In fact, preemptively, you've been, you've been getting in touch already and uh, some of them I might even be able to actually read out live on air. But there's a poll taking place at the moment on our Twitter. I'll bring you the results very shortly. Now, to debate this, I am joined by cleaning guru, the one and only yeah. Kim Woodburn and TV presenter no Jenny sound. Barnett. Right. OK, so I'm going to start with you, Jenny. Do you think that Lorraine was well within her eyes to say that? Is that not body shaming and, dare I say, even sexism? No. If you uh, could elaborate, yeah. that'd be great. If you, <laughs> I will develop this. Listen, if you're going to go on I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here, you are putting yourself self up in the stocks for people to throw tomatoes at you. Nigel Farage has done a great deal of damage, and if anybody can have a go at him, they will. Lorraine Kelly hasn't got a nasty bone in her body, and to shift his bottom into body shaming in a moment of... Uh, High jinx, really. I think he's nonsense. Well, it was Kim, his face. It wasn't his what? bottom. There's been universal applause for his bottom. It was his face that, that she was having a go. Kim, Kim I'll, I'll get you on this now. Look, what, what do you make of Lorraine's comments? Look, my love, she's a stupid, stupid woman. Let's face it now. How old is she? 63. She's like a child in a playground. He is in there. He's doing a, a splendid job. He's polite and courteous. He's done the trial and got every star. Leave him alone. Lorraine Kelly, you ain't all that, dear. You ain't all that. 
I don't I think she No, 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 no. All oh, right, well, right. stop, stop, stop. Jenny, Jenny, you go. No, Kim, I Jenny. Jenny, go, Jenny, go. Talk now, Jenny, go. I, I will go. Coco on, Chanel. Right. Stop, both of you. I'm already getting a little bit sick of this. Jenny, come back to what Kim's just said. Well, I just think throwing personal jibes at someone like Lorraine is is so low. It's not about that. Celebrity is about people watching and seeing other people being humiliated. Coco Chanel said we're born with three faces, one we're born with, one we create and one we deserve. It's not something new to Lorraine Kelly. I think that this is just wanting to knock anybody and people should be allowed to make jokes about a show like All right, Kim, go on, Kim, respond to that then. This is Why Nigel's opening himself up to it. Go on. Why should they be allowed to make jokes? It's a television show. Who gives you or I the right? right? Oh. I'm speaking. Shut up. You've had your say. Now, don't start. And I hope you've done your homework this time because you didn't last time and admitted you hadn't. So you shut up for a minute. If I go on a television show, I go in because I get a fat check. They've all gone in for the money, which you would as well. God, who'd have you, though? But the point is, you are not supposed to be scrutinised for your face or your bum or your knockers or your... Uh, what is all that? Are we children? And she's 63. Are we children? Hope she scrutinises you, dear. I wonder what you'd say then. Wait till it happens to you, and I bloody well hope it does. You deserve it. But right. back in Lorraine, she was rude and nasty. Um, J Jenny, do you I think... Was yeah, asked, go on. Actually. I was asked to go on to I'm a Celebrity, but my family said, had I done that, they would never talk to me. So turning down the night meant I didn't go on to it. But a programme like that is put on television for people to do exactly what Lorraine is. It's there is to... No, well, how did you feel about Mylene Cass being talked about under the shower. Were you as cross about that as you are about this? That was positive, though, I, I think. I mean, I, I do tell what you're saying, but, I mean, that was from my memory of that, and I think my memory of, of that's actually relatively vivid. It was quite a positive <laughs> reaction. Um, it was quite a positive reaction. Jenny, can I just... Um, I'll tell you what, both of you, I'm going to play a little clip now, because it's, it's another clip of a female presenter. It's Kay Burley, off of a channel that we're not going to name, uh, talking about David Cameron, right? So let's, let's play this jobs that were controversial, wrote a memoir, but put on never and uh, uh, put on weight, never fully found his feet post uh, So just in case we missed that, that was that was Kay Burley making a joke about David Cameron putting a bit of weight on. Uh, and Kim, I just wonder, you know, are there double standards here in the media? You know, uh, like if these are these are women talking you know, pretty bluntly about men's appearances, Kim? They're talking on a television show, not to, if they want to talk among themselves in their lounge with a cup of tea. Oh, go wild, lovey. But she's on a television show. There's thousands and thousands are listening to this. And it's not fair to, my, to Farage, I'm sorry. Well, they must have history between them. That's her business, not my business. But you don't use every opportunity when you get it to slam someone's face. Who the hell is she to say what does look nice and what doesn't? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We're, it's like kids do in a school. Hello, fatty. They're children, not 63-year-olds, my love. OK, uh, well, final I word to you on this, Jenny. I don't agree. Uh, my husband said quite recently that when he sees me naked, he remembers how old he is. And I thought that was quite amusing. The fact is that Nigel Farage has put himself up to be pilloried. And if he didn't think he was going to get pilloried after everything he did with Brexit, then he should actually have not gone on the programme. And I think your assessment of Lorraine is wrong. OK. Well, both of you... Well, you're entitled to your opinion, aren't you? I mean, let's be honest, your husband doesn't sound like a gentleman to me, let's be perfectly honest. My husband looks at me after many years of marriage. Well, that's your opinion. You've got him, I haven't. My husband looks at me after all our years of marriage and says to me, Kim, you're as beautiful as the day I met you. Now, he might be lying through his teeth, 
But we women want that. If you don't want it, there's something wrong with you to call you an old bat. Right. He never just called you an old bat. And you're getting the thank you, darling. I just don't want the thank you. OK, this has descended into the gusset now, so we'll call it a day. Thank you very much, both of you. Lovely stuff. And, in a way, that was exactly what we wanted. Right, OK, so uh, Kim Woodburn there, the one and only, and TV presenter Jenny Barnett, who, it's fair to say, have history, and very recent history. So, who do you agree with? Should Lorraine Kelly apologise for body-shaming Nigel Farage and saying that he's got the face he deserves? Rob on Twitter says, if Nigel had said something like that about Lorraine, there would have been absolute uproar. He would have been labelled a misogynistic and arrogant man. Well, yeah, he would have done. But he wouldn't have said it, though, is the thing. He just wouldn't have said it. That's not Nigel, is it? Kevin on Twitter says, why do people think they can make such personal comments about Nigel? Maybe she's slugging him off because she thinks that'll make her popular with ITV bosses. Simon on Twitter says, I don't think Nigel will care what Lorraine is saying about him. He's too busy winning in the jungle. Well, look, your verdict is in. 86% of you agree that Lorraine Kelly should apologise, while 14% of you say that she should not. Now, coming up, as Germany considers banning prostitution after it was branded the brothel of Europe, should the UK now ban sex workers? This is a really, really interesting group, a campaign group that I've got on here. So Claire Bentley-Smith joins me. She's got a campaign group that photographs blokes in their cars and posts their number plate and their details online so that their wives find out when they've been um, curb crawling, is the word, I think, isn't it? But first... As Meghan Markle revisits a feminist climate change group for the first time since quitting the royal family, is the Duchess turning to activism to halt her Hollywood decline? I've been delving into some of her activism so far and the results may shock you. Top royal biographer Angela Levin offers her expert insight and reporting. That's next. Don't move. Who is it? We're here for the show. Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour, with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> My CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News. Wake up to the headlines with headliners every morning at 5 a.m. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. There's only three people you can trust in life. Your doctor, your lawyer, and your nana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. To join me, Nana Aquir, at 3 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday, where we discuss the biggest topics of the weekend. Be ready for battle. Have you be quiet? <laughs> what is this? Is it, is it you? <laughs> it's on your teeth. It's on your teeth. It's, I, I don't bite. Well, not without a good reason. Always honest, always fun. Every weekend at 3 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News.
Big stories, big guests, and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. Tired of the usual focus-tested, pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's The Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Former Home Secretary and Tory hard hitter Pretty Patel is still to come, but it's time now for royal biographer and journalist Angela Levin and Meghan Markle made a surprise visit to a feminist climate change group in Vancouver yesterday. The Duchess of Sussex went to Justice for Girls for the first time since January 2020, days after she sensationally quit the royal family. And taking to Instagram, obviously, after the visit, Justice for Girls wrote... A feminist advocate from a young age herself, the Duchess was keen to chat with two of our teen interns to discuss their personal struggles for justice. Her genuine and understanding approach left the girls feeling heard, supported and inspired. So, Angela, has the Duchess <laughs> made the world significantly better over the last four years through her activism? No, not at all because it's nonsense. She hasn't known how to do things. She's often there for five, ten minutes. All you see is that five, ten minutes at get the money and they're off. Um, she's off. Um, so she doesn't spend a long time really talking. There's a lot of phony smiles. And it's just because she needs ticks now for loads and loads of things that she's going to do across a wide range. I mean, what she's really done the most of is flying in private jets. That's been um, a great hobby. And also, it's very interesting because when she was in New York and went to read her book, um, the bench to some very, very poor children in a school. She had doled herself up in the most ridiculous jewellery and outfit. And she did the same with this case. She went along with a very expensive um, necklace and wrist ring and, and all sorts of things like that. And I don't think when you go to somebody who's got no money and is actually very finding life very difficult, mm. you don't go as a sort of flamboyant woman in very expensive yeah, I mean, clothes. I suppose, I suppose the counter to that is that you would say, well, maybe she's giving them something to aspire to. No, I don't think so. It's a show off, isn't it? But I think if you look through what she's failed at, it's loads of things, you know, that there's so many of them because she starts off and um, blasts herself that she's going to be great. Like she wants to be number one in a, in a film. Um, and they, but only if she gets an A grade director and nothing comes of it because she's very demanding mm. and she can't do it. She's not a very good actress. Um, and so on. It's just loads of things. Bearing in mind that they left the royal family, at least in part, because they wanted to go and do a load of activism, they wanted to go and do a load of charity work. And again, I think it's worth noting that had they stayed in the royal family, yes, some of that stuff would have been, you know, cutting a ribbon outside an Aldi in Milton Keynes or unveiling a plaque somewhere. There's a bit of that stuff that goes on, and I can understand how that's not always the most glamorous mm. thing. But it is essentially a non-stop charity round. Now, October the 11th, 2023, celebrated you know, International Day of the Girl with Troop 6000. I don't know what they are. They sound like a 90s band. Providing back-to-school essentials for girls in Nigeria. Megan wins a top entertainment podcast host from the Gracie Awards, which I'm assuming is not an ironic award. Um, they've contributed a recipe. Megan contributed a recipe to the World Central Kitchen Cookbook, Feeding Humanity, Feeding Hope. Now, we just did a little bit of a, a dive. Now, this is what we found online, OK? So this is what we found online. Reportedly, the, the charitable foundation that, that Harry and Meghan have, uh, its tax returns for 2021 showed that $13 million came from two anonymous backers, OK? Well, Harry and Meghan, and this is just what we found online, worked 52 hours in the year, which equates to one hour per week, and it raised less than four and a half grand in public 
donations. Is that a dedicated life of service? No, of course not. That's one hour a, a week for all the charities that they're supposed to be involved in, which is really nothing. It's a five, ten minute for each of them. And I don't think any of these things... I think Harry would love to do more but I don't think it's Megan's idea. I mean, he wanted to go to Africa and really help either with animals that are now, you know, very few of them and help people there. Um, Megan wasn't the least bit interested. Megan's got the thing of pushing herself, that's the thing. Mm. Harry still has quite a lot of wishing he could do proper charity work, but she won't let him and drags him with her. And, of course, it is actually shameful to pretend that you are um, somebody that people should look up to, because if we all did one hour uh, yeah. a week or a month or a year with our charity, it would be absolutely appalling. Well, let's, let's veer away from Harry and Meghan now and talk about uh, Princess Eugenie because she's revealed in the Table Manners podcast the golden rules that members of the royal family are meant to follow. We can have a little listen to this. I think um, also, yeah, I just... I've, I've, I, I, the way we've been brought up is to, is to just... Yeah, not... You don't need to, I don't need to overshare. Mm, OK, so you don't overshare. Would Harry and Meghan do well to remember that? No, they don't do that at all, do they? I mean, we've already seen with, with Harry telling the world that he was going to phone his father to wish him a happy 75th birthday. They've, they've offered an invite up... they said they're open to an invite for Christmas? They have done, have mm. they? They said they're open to it. Oh, yeah, they're open to it. Yeah, there, that's right. But, I mean, this was not something that you would do, because he hasn't spoken to his father for months, mm. to keep it private. But they can't keep things private. They actually have to spill it all out. They make money that way. And I feel, rather cynically, that they want to go and see the royal family to actually get information that they can sell on. That would be the fear, wouldn't it? That mm. would be the fear that they, they simply could not be... Mm. Trusted. Uh, and, you know, you look at some of the things, again, that they've done here, International Women's Day, elevating working women. What does all of this really mean? You know, the Duchess of Sussex, her patronage, Smart Works, partnered with Kuyana, a women's empowerment initiative. Is this just a kind of word salad that people... This is like... This is like LinkedIn for yes, charity. Yes, it's, it's known very much as uh, Megan and the word salad, because if you actually listen to what she says, you can't actually hear it at all. I mean, she said one thing just recently when she was in her beige dress, and she said what well, she's very excited because she's going to do all sorts of things, including um, helping people to feel. Well, you tell me, how do people helping feel? Helping people to feel. Helping people to feel. Right. Yes. Well, well, you know, she thinks that she was thinking that was rather important, but do you well, know what that means? Well, I don't I do know what that means. I do a lot of work means. in helping people to blink and <laughs> um, helping people to, to inhale uh, oxygen as well. But, Angela, thank you very much. We're out of time. Okay. That was lovely stuff there. That is uh, the royal biographer and journalist, Angela Levin. Now, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have previously said the Archwell Foundation believes that compassion is the defining cultural force of the 21st century and, through its work, Archwell Foundation supports a growing community of partner organisations fueling systemic cultural change. Great. Archwell Foundation listens to people and their communities, helps them tell their stories, puts real action behind its words and spotlights a new generation of leadership. OK, at some point we might see hardcore evidence of that. Now, coming up, I'm joined by Dame Pretty Patel, live in the studio for her exclusive reaction to Jeremy Hunt's autumn snooze fest. He took an axe to tax, but was the Chancellor bold enough? The former Home Secretary gives her unfiltered verdict on that. Rwanda... A little bit more. But next, the brothel of Europe. That's Germany's newest nickname. And they're desperately trying to shake it by banning sex workers. But should the UK follow suit? Co-founder of Save Our Eyes, the campaign group, Claire Bentley-Smith, has her say. You will not want to miss that. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan, Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks, the admission's free. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5am. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. 
Headliners every morning at 5am, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens with our team of dedicated journalists across the UK. We're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News. Britain's news channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Tired of the usual focus tested pre prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Ben Leo is live from Down Under with all of the latest on our night in the jungle and comedy king Jim Davidson on I'm a Celeb's biggest ever behind the scene route. Apparently, and I'm not joking now, apparently they are trying to censor Nigel Farage. But first, with Germany fast becoming, and this is their words, not mine, the brothel of Europe. Politicians in the country are calling for a ban on buying sex more than two decades after much celebrated laws. Legalised prostitution gave thousands of sex workers employment rights. Now, since then, opposition parties argue that the system has been gamed by exploitative human traffickers and pimps. I mean, who could have seen that coming? What a better phrase. Who import vulnerable young girls from abroad to work in German brothels. Now, I am joined by Claire Bentley-Smith, co-founder of Save Our Eyes, a grassroots group that monitors street prostitution in the UK. Look, Claire, thank you very, very much. Um, I'm going to start by asking you a little bit about what your group does, because I must say I find this fascinating. So go on. Oh, OK, we'll get Claire's uh, audio sorted. Don't worry, Claire, we'll sort that out. I'll fill you in a little bit on what goes on. So there are parts of Leeds where it's essentially become legal to... Well, it's not really legal, to tout for business on the street, as it were. And people have been abusing that, right? So you see massive problems, of course, with drugs, massive problems with pimps, massive problems with violence towards women. Uh, and also, for the people who actually live in that area, in Holbeck, it's just not particularly nice to see blokes turning up in cars and, you know, pulling over and whatever happens next. The police have, up until now, been turning a blind eye to this. So the local residents decided that they were going to take it upon themselves to do something about it. So what they started doing was taking pictures of the number plates and the cars for some of these alleged punters, as it were, and they have a punter of the week, right? So then they put it out on their social media and they try to out this individual or shame this individual. Anyway, so we were having a little look earlier on, and, and it is not illegal at the moment in Britain to exchange money for uh, sexual services. I know that many people think uh, that it is, but it isn't. So I was wondering whether or not we should actually go the whole hog and ban it a little bit 
like Germany has done. Because what the Germans are finding, and this is not just a problem in Germany, it's actually a problem right across Europe, especially apparently near the European Parliament in Brussels. Now, you can read into that what you will, but they are looking to ban it. Claire is back. Yes. Hello, okay. so I can hear you now. Good. So, yeah, go on. So fill us in a little bit about, about what, your, what your group does and, and whether or not you think we should do what the Germans are thinking of doing, which is basically banning sex work. So what, what our group was established in uh, 2017 um, as a reaction to the de decriminalisation of uh, street sex work specifically um, in the area where we lived in Leeds. Um, and what that saw was as soon as it was tolerated or decriminalised, that the industry flourished, demand increased, and we saw an influx of women being trafficked from Eastern Europe and such like. And that's very similar to what's happened in Germany since it was uh, the, the liberalisation of their prostitution laws in 2002, is that there's been a huge upsurge in trafficking and exploitation of people being brought in to fill the demand of the men that want to buy um, sexual services, and I think what we need to do... Oh, OK, we're not having much luck with Claire, are we? But there we go. I mean, there is very much multiple different aspects to this, OK? So there is the massive exploitation of, of women, OK? There is the influx there and the, the money flooding into the, the black economy when it comes to pimps, etc. But there is also... Genuinely, the issue for local residents, if you live in an area, you would probably like that area to not just be something looking a lot like an open-air brothel. And the police, we see all too often, they write off shop thefts, they write off car thefts, and now it appears they might be writing this off as well. I'm going to go for the hat trick here. Claire, yes, OK. So, um, so you've explained a little bit about what, the, what some of the problems uh, are there, but can I ask a bit about some of the novel tactics that, that some of the campaign groups are using to try to, to try to clamp down on this? So we we were able to expose the punters that were coming into our area. They were actually quite often um, curb crawling myself, other members of the community, and even some of the schoolgirls walking around in their school oh, uniforms great. where we lived. And because of that, we started to photograph the guys and posting posted their, their number plates and stuff online in order to expose and embarrassment embarrass them and actually warn other punters that the community wasn't going to stand for the oppression of the sort of crime wave and antisocial behaviour. The other thing that we were very importantly wanting to champion was, you know, increased services to help women to have rehabilitation and exit from the industry because what we saw happen in our streets was immense suffering like I, I can't even begin to describe the sort of stuff that our community witnessed happening in our streets yeah well claire thank you very very much for shining a light on this issue and for giving us a little bit of context i, I would love to get you back on maybe talk for a little bit longer about this That's claire bentley smith there who's uh, got a group save our eyes about uh, the problem in their local area. Now, GB News has been trying to arrange a sparring match between our presenter, the Red Wall Rottweiler Lee Anderson, and the Ramona with a megaphone, Steve Bray. But thus far, it's amounted to nothing, with Steve refusing to appear on Lee's show. So, the pair had a little run in instead on the streets today, and we've obtained footage. <laughs> Don't worry, Steve. We can make it happen for you on our show, in this studio. Anderson versus Bray on Patrick Christie's Tonight. I've laid down the gauntlet. Don't let me down, Mr Bray.
Well, coming up, former Home Secretary Dame Priti Patel joins me live in the studio to give her unvarnished reaction to Jeremy Hunt's tax-slashing autumn statement. Don't miss a true Tory titan coming live in just a sec. Oh, and yes, what's this? Wow. Well, apparently, apparently we're about to see it kick right off in the jungle with Nigel Farage. Stay tuned. Good evening, I'm Alex Deakin. This is your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. The wind's picking up a bit tonight and tomorrow, particularly so across the north. Largely dry in the south tomorrow, but it's going to turn colder for all of us by Friday. Still got high pressure nearby to the southwest, but this cold front will be introducing the colder air as the isobars squeeze together, the winds picking up. A very blustery night across northern Scotland, particularly so in the Northern Isles. Got a wet night for the Highlands, and that rain slowly edging south across the Western Isles. Further south, some patchy rain over the hills of southern Scotland and northern England, but many places will be dry. The breeze and the cloud will help to keep the temperatures up, so a, a milder night than of late. But it is going to turn colder. Uh, initially tomorrow across Scotland, so there'll be some sunny spells developing, but there'll be blustery showers across the far north. A, a wet morning through the central belt, that rain spreading south into Northern Ireland, eventually into Northern England. But a, a good part of England and Wales again looking dry. Some sunshine across parts of the south and east, easily seeing temperatures up to 12, maybe 13 Celsius. But there's the colder air, single digits, and feeling even colder with the wind across Scotland. And the colder air spreads south for uh, Friday, some patchy rain in the southwest, showers coming into the northeast. They'll be wintry in nature, some sleet and snow even to lower levels. For many, though, Friday will just be a, a bright, crisp day. But uh, you will notice that drop in temperatures, single figures, and feeling even colder in the east with the wind. Who is it? We're here for the show. Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour, with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting <laughs> Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> My CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News. Tired of the usual focus tested pre prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening, this is Patrick Christie's Tonight. Now, Margaret was a very strong leader, and they were tough times. Yeah. But she changed the country completely. Yeah. Completely. Would you ever want to run? Oh, well, does Nigel Farage actually want to be Prime Minister? I'll bring you his exact answer with our man on the inside, Ben Leo. He's got all the jungle gossip for us. That's coming shortly. But in the moment of the series so far, and this has just happened, Nigel had an almighty ding-dong over immigration with the villain of the show, Nella, who absolutely lost it last night. That full explosive clip is coming to you in mere moments. Then there's unmissable reaction from Britain's best entertainer, it's Jim Davidson, plus so former Home Secretary welcome. Dame Priti Patel is live to give her unvarnished view of the autumn statement. Rwanda 
and much, much more. Going at it on the sofa tonight are Christine Hamilton, Adam Brooks and Matthew Lazar. It's Patrick Christie's tonight and we're live. But now, here's your headlines. Patrick, thank you. Good evening. A raft of tax cuts and benefits increases aimed at making 27 million people better off was announced by the Chancellor today. In the biggest change outlined in his autumn statement this morning, Jeremy Hunt said national insurance will be cut from 12 to 10 per cent. The triple lock on pensions will be kept, taking the state pension up by 8.5 per cent to more than £220 a week. And taxes on alcohol will be frozen until next year, meaning no increase in duty on beer, cider, wines or spirits. The mother of a 28-year-old woman shot dead in Liverpool has labelled her daughter's killers monsters today as they were jailed for life for her murder. Ashley Dale was murdered when James Witham forced his way into her home and opened fire with a machine gun. He and three other men were handed life sentences with minimum terms to serve of between 41 and 47 years. And the hometown of four teenage boys who died in North Wales has cancelled tonight's Christmas light switch on out of respect for the families involved. Jevon Hurst, Harvey Owen and Will Fitchett and Hugo Morris were off on a camping trip in the Snowdonia area, but their bodies were recovered yesterday after a car was found overturned and partially submerged in water. North Wales police saying it appears to have been a tragic accident. And a man and a woman in their 30s have died after a migrant boat capsized off the French coast this evening. French and British maritime agencies were called to reports of a boat in difficulties around eight miles from the port of Boulogne at around five o'clock. French officials say 60 people were crammed on board the small boat which had begun sinking. Other migrants have been taken to Dungeness in Kent this evening. Those are your latest news stories. This is GB News across the UK on TV, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying play GB News. This is Britain's news channel. Welcome back now. We've had a right rumble in the jungle. That's right, things have got a bit spicy down under after TikTok star Nella Rose clashed with Nigel over the UK's out-of-control immigration numbers. Here it is. But that, since Chief we're going to get everything out in the open, let's get yeah. everything out of the open. Right. So when... Sorry, all the tea is coming out now. So basically... <laughs> but this is what I was saying it, to apparently you. Apparently you're anti-immigrants. Who told you that? Oh, Who the internet. Told, the oh, internet. well, there we are. Then. It must be true. It must be true. It must be. <laughs> it must be true. OK, but then why don't black people like you? You'd be amazed they do. Well, You'd be amazed. Nigel! If, if you came oh, with me... Nigel. If you came with me, if you, huh? came, if you came with me through South London, you'd be astonished. Oh, wow! What were you doing in South London, Nigel? Well, I'm there every day. You're in South. He's doing... from... Wait, sorry, I'm so sorry to be shy. From... What are you doing? <laughs> sorry, He's from South London. I travel through what South you... London. So, so issue. everyone hates you for no reason. Well, no, 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 not no, that no, everyone no, hates you. No, 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 that was no, no. so bad. Like, but yeah. like, sorry, you can you, bad. you can disagree with somebody, yeah. but to chuck around accusations the way that they've been chucked around is grossly unfair. Anti-immigrant, right? No, no, all I've said is we cannot go on with, come with the numbers coming to Britain that are coming. Do you know why? You know I'm why? one of the numbers! Oh, right, so, that, so that's it then. So should it be five million a year, ten million a year? <gasps> Question, No, right? you don't seem to understand. Nigel, hang on, hang on, hang on. Those wait, wait, immigrants wait, wait. that are coming you, in, and, and, hang I on, came hang in. on, hang on, hang on. Had you think, been in power think, a bit think, later? Why are you so wrong about think. immigrants? Yeah, we've got more of that coming your way as well. Well, what did you make of that? I want to hear from you. GBviews at gbnews.com. Get the emails coming in. I'm joined by author and broadcaster, former campmate as well, Christine Hamilton, businessman and activist, possibly soon to be campmate, Adam Brooks, <laughs> and former Labour Party advisor, Matthew Laza. Who's not been asked. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and never will be. Um, but, Christine, look, that there, Nigel Farage getting called all the names under the sun, black people don't like you, why are you hated, essentially being called a racist. Well, I mean, Nella, I, I didn't know who she was when she came in. She had a huge row with Fred last night or night before, uh, which was appalling the way she behaved with him. She's now done it again. She's either thick or stupid. I take your pick, one or the other. There's not a lot of, but, there's not a lot of wiggle room. In no, there isn't exactly. But Nigel, Nigel, Nigel 
did not rise. Good for Nigel, he didn't rise. Um, quite right, too. Uh, she's made some outrageous accusations. But I think where I think Nigel has gone wrong is that he said in what he thought was a stage whisper, but he obviously hasn't realised, a bit naive still, mm. that every single whisper is heard to Grace Dent, I want to do the trials because yeah. I want 25% of the airtime. That will absolutely wind people up not to give him the trials. Okay. I don't think he'll get another do, trial. Do you not think, Adam, that, that sums it up? That, that Nigel is in there, right, and he's got someone like Nella mm. saying really, really... Frankly, stupid stuff. Like, mm. What are you doing in South London? Oh, that was extraordinary. Nigel, what were you doing? How dare you? He went to school in South London. Nigel's Posh girl. genuinely very popular amongst yeah. amongst mm. the black community. I mean, yeah. you have to be it, it, quite out of touch to say that stuff, yeah. no? Yeah, but we see this on Twitter every day, you know, because I'm on GB News, suddenly I'm this label, I'm that label. They, they, they just like to parrot these silly sort of yeah. tropes that they hear, you know, and it goes around. And these younger generations, it's almost trendy to have that opinion mm. about someone like Nigel. All I will say is every time I see Nigel up here, comes and asks me how my pubs are doing, comes and asks me how my family is, He's a genuinely nice guy. And there's a lot of lefties that actually work at TV News that like him mm. as well. You know, he's a pleasant and guy. Look, Matthew, so far in there, OK, Nigel has had Fred say things to him like... Uh, I won't do the accent. Uh, yeah, say things like... Yeah, Please say, don't. <laughs> say, saying, oh, you know, the, the Brexit vote... You're tempted. You didn't, you didn't, <laughs> yeah. I am. Did, I'm quivering on the edge. Didn't want Europeans in, which is... Just absolute madness, you know. He's criticising him for that that poster with which has. has it's a legitimate. Right. That's a legitimate criticism. Because it's happened though. No, but the, that that poster that Nigel stood in front of is happening, right? So Nigel, in my view, was right to double down on that. Now you've got Nella going. Why do black people hate you? What is? I mean, how do you how do you engage with that? Oh, well, I think, look, as you say, Adam, the thing about Nigel is, uh, uh, agree with him or disagree with him, and I disagree with him on pretty much everything, he is utterly charming. When I worked at the BBC for a long time, you know, in the years when he was, you know, when he was building UKIP up, he was always incredibly polite to people at the BBC who were not his natural, not his favourite broadcaster, not his yeah. natural audience. Yeah. And his very calm reaction um, there uh, will, 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 will only do him in good stead. I mean, the left is getting its... Are we allowed to say Nick is in a twist still? Yeah. I mean, there were three, there were three headlines from The Guardian this week, just in the same day, he's a celebrity, but Nigel Farage gives me the creepy crawlies. ITV normalises the abhorrent by putting Nigel Farage in the Boy, jungle. Boy, George was in there. <laughs> the, one of the blokes who presents... Anyway. Been in prison. Exactly. For... So what I'm saying, trying to say is, 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 is the left needs to take a chill pill, mm. because reacting like that mm. is exactly plays into... I... It, it sends into his hands Can in I terms just go of to the inbox. Yeah. Human. Look, quickly on this. Monty's been on. We're going to... Well, by the way, I want to bring you this clip again at some point soon, because I think people might have missed that first time round, so I just want to play it again. It's only a minute or so. Patrick, I'm absolutely disgusted that Nella has practically accused Nigel of being a racist. Uh, yeah, there you go. And um, there's a lot of this. Just who is this gobby woman? Nella says Jill. Um, people say Nigel. Nigel knows. Uh, so, so Scott says that woman wasn't prepared to listen to the answer. She just says. I'm an immigrant, and this means me. Not willing to engage, Christine, on the detail of... Yeah. Well, hang on a minute. How, what's, well, how many yeah. migrants well, is, is, should be the limit? What about GP appointments, etc.? Well, Nigel is a mature man who knows his onions. Nella is 26. She's suddenly been promoted to this massive stage. She's an influencer or a blogger. I'm not quite sure which. Yeah. She's, frankly, she's blogger. been promoted beyond her pay grade, and she's so out of her depth, and she is just displaying grotesque ignorance and inability to argue. Now, Nigel is coming over very, very well when oh. he talks, as he did when he was talking to Fred well, well, about who do, Brexit. Who do you think came across better there, though? Well, That's Nigel, the thing Nigel, but Twitter, Twitter uh, will be uh, divided on this. We was just chatting backstage, Pretty Patel, and I said, like, Steve Bray, educated Remainers will back Steve Bray because he's on their side, mm. right? So you people to, put that... Maybe but, I don't. Who are you? No, but <laughs> what I think was Nella is going to be a star from this. She's causing controversy. Even though she's not coming across well, she's going to become a lot more famous because oh, of her of antics. of course. And at the end of the day, this young generation, that's all they want, mm. clicks... And likes. And she, and I was just checking when Nella was actually born. She was born in Belgium, so she, she's, she's a new part of the answer to name five famous Belgians. Oh, she well is. Done. Yes, she is. But yes. she will yes. be yes. applauded. She'll prison. be applauded yeah. for attacking Nigel. Yes. Okay. Amongst, All right. Look, uh, look, look. We're going to cross live now to Australia, where our reporter Ben Leo is beachside for the inside track on another eventful day for Nigel down under. Ben. Patrick, good morning from down under. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm getting right involved. In 
serious journalist, but I've gone all mainstream. Talking about Nella Rose, goodness me, Gen Z victimhood personified. She could win the lottery and take offence at it. But let's forget about her for a minute. Elsewhere last night, Nigel gave the biggest hint yet that he's going to make a big return to politics. Jungle King to Prime Minister? He didn't rule it out. Yeah, absolutely. This was where Nigel was talking, wasn't he, about whether or not he would be Prime Minister. I think we've got a little clip of that now, haven't we? Who's your favourite Prime Minister ever oh, in your God, lifetime? Ever? In my lifetime? Is there, is there any, really, in my lifetime, two Prime Ministers who've been really strong, who've changed the country? One's Thatcher and one's Blair. I didn't like the way Blair changed the country at all, but I have to admit, he was a strong leader. No, Margaret was a very strong leader, and they were tough times. Yeah. But she changed the country completely. Yeah. Completely. Would you ever want to run? As generous. I don't know. Minister. We'll see. Depends how much mess the country gets in. Really? <laughs> I don't, honestly don't know. I mean, it's not an easy job. Look, Ben, thank you very much for everything you're doing for us down there. I might go back to you before the end of the show, but we've got to rattle through this. It's the wonderful Ben Leo trying his best not to enjoy himself too much on the Gold Coast. <laughs> now, uh, the emails are flying in here. Nella's just shown herself up, says Paul. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to play you that clip again very shortly. But I'm a Celebrity has been hit with its biggest ever behind-the-scenes row with the programme's woke snowflake production staff said to be unable to stomach the sight of Nigel because of his brave championing of Brexit and his tough stance on immigration. We all heard what he said to Nella there. It was absolutely fine, but one source in The Sun said Nigel's political views are at odds with many working on I'm a Celeb. Shock. But he's the best character in the jungle by far. Giving him so much screen time may be the last thing some of the crew want to do, but Nigel is too good not to. I'm joined now by comedy king Jim Davidson. Jim, you know, do you think that they're going to try to just cancel him off the show, despite the fact they've supposedly given him one and a half million quid? No, I... I well, I, I... I don't think they should cancel him off the show. I think they should throw her out. I mean, what an idiot. I'm ser seriously, I don't wish to be rude to that poor young girl, but Nigel should just swerve round her. I mean, if brains were dynamite, she wouldn't have enough to blow her head off, would she? How can you debate with someone that is so bigoted like that? It's ridiculous. And I'm not talking about Nigel. I think this is a, a sort of reverse situation uh, that we've got here. It's crazy. It's crazy. This woman obviously knows nothing about politics. She's read about Nigel Farage on the internet and bang, in she goes. Absolutely ridiculous. She's so daft, she could be on the Labour front bench. Well, well, give, give it time, Jim, I, I suppose. Um, I mean, what did you think of that exchange? Because Nigel, Nigel's copped it over Brexit so far and, you know, batted that away. What he was saying about Nella, again, we'll get that clip up for you again in a second, but what he was saying about Nella was, I can't, I can't really have a discussion with you, OK? So think about what the numbers of immigration is and population growth is. She didn't want to consider that. She yeah. basically said because she was an immigrant into this country that that, I think, made him a racist and he was wrong about everything. I mean, how can you have a discussion with someone like that? I can't. Well, that's Belgians for you, isn't it? He should give up on her and go back and have a go at the Frenchman. I think he's on a winner there. And I think he's doing really, really well. When he ate them pizzas with the willies on, well, he's a star for me. Now, here's what could happen. Nigel could join the Conservative Party, become Deputy Prime Minister to Lee Anderson. You could go in as Foreign Secretary and have me as Home Secretary and we'll be the GB News Party. Perfect. All right, now, I, I am just going to emphasise, as somebody who's recently got back from Belgium, I love the Belgians, there's nothing wrong with the Belgian people. Let's just play a little refresher clip, a little refresher clip of Nella versus Nige. Right, so when... Sorry, all the tea is coming out now. So, basically... But this is what I was saying it, to you. Apparently, you're anti-immigrants. Who told you that? Oh, Who the internet. Told... The oh, well, internet. there we are, then. It must be true. It must be true. It must be. <laughs> it must be true. Are you worried, though, Jim, that he's going to end up at the mercy of the edits with this kind of stuff, you know, and it's all well, going to be gang it. upon I, Nigel? I can't hear what you're saying now. I think the, uh, the, the oh, old ears are we going to get... up with... OK, all right, now... Oh, look, are you worried, yes. Christine, that it's all going to be gang upon Nigel? Well, I, I know where you're coming from. When I was asked, what are you afraid of? Not snakes, nothing like that. It's the editing. 
He's too good to edit out completely. They, they, I don't think they will. I mean, what I fear he's done, I touched on it earlier, he's edited himself out of the trials because people are not going to vote for him. First of all, because he does them so well. That's mm -hmm. not much fun. If people are going to... And Matt Hancock did them all brilliantly. Farage would do every single one brilliantly. And he's admitted that he wants to do them, so people are not going to vote for him. I, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't think he can win. He, you have to be really nice to okay. win. You have to be big ins. You have to be Tony Blackburn. I mean, I wasn't nice enough to win. I came third. Tony Blackburn won. It's always the very nice people. He'll go right through, I think, um, but I don't think he'll win. The, the, the sense in the inbox at the moment, gbviews at gbnews.com, and Tim echoes this. I'm going to paraphrase you, though, Tim. He's basically saying that the bigotry here appears to be shown by the people on the other side of this discussion because mm. they're, they're, of not, they're not. They're yeah. not. They're not actually. Uh, yeah. Listening to what Nigel says, they haven't it, really done the research. It doesn't matter what Nilla or anyone says to him. You've got these crazy Romaniacs on Twitter and online that will back anything that goes against Nigel. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a bit of a cult but you, against you, Nigel Farage. But you know one thing, Matthew, very finally, because I know we're on a break now, but very finally, uh, I do wonder, you know, Nigel spends a lot of time here and he spends a lot of time around people he likes and a lot of people who do, you know, echo his views a lot of the time. You know, maybe he might struggle to realise, good grief, but amongst people who don't live and breathe politics and who aren't that educated about it, God, maybe this is the perception of me. I think slightly... I mean, the truth of the matter is every politician faces voters who, quite naturally, aren't, don't spend their lives talking about politics in the way that they do. So that's why politicians are quite good with people who don't know as much about politics because those are the people they ask to vote for them. Talking of the woke, the woke team, I nearly worked on the, ser the first series. I worked at ITV and so I was about to work in the jungle you and I would have met Christine. We would have met... We would have met all those years ago, but I left to the BBC just in but time. You would, you would, which is a phrase no-one's ever said before. <laughs> oh, um, I got a pay rise, too. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, well, which we paid for, so you're welcome. Right now, OK, coming up, coming up, coming up. I bring you the most entertaining and informative press preview anywhere in the country as me and tonight's press pack analyse all of tomorrow's newspaper front pages and a couple of bits and bobs from inside the book. But next, former Home Secretary Dame Priti Patel is live to give her unvarnished view on the autumn statement, a bit on Rwanda and much more. Don't go anywhere. We're here for the show. Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5am. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5am, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. There's only three people you can trust in life. Your doctor, your lawyer, and your nana. 
I'm not sure. So join me, Nana Aquir, at 3 p.m. every Saturday and Sunday, where we discuss the biggest topics of the weekend. Be ready for battle. Could you be quiet? <laughs> what is this? Is it, well, if you... it, 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 it. It's on your teeth. It's on your teeth. I don't bite. Well, not without a good reason. Always honest, always fun. Every weekend at 3 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. Tired of the usual focus tested pre prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9 30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Time now for an exclusive interview with the former Home Secretary, Tory party grandee, the architect of the Rwanda plan initially, it's Dame Priti Patel. Now, thank you very much for joining us. It's very nice to see you. Lovely evening. to have you on the show. Important day for news, actually, because mm. Chancellor Jeremy Hunt delivered a crucial autumn <clears throat> statement, didn't he, to the nation. That was a bit earlier today. And he's aiming to bolster Britain's economy and, quote, reward hard work. I'll just show a little clip of what he said. Our choice is not big government high spending and high tax, because we know that leads to less growth, not more. Instead, we reduce debt, cut taxes and reward work. In response to... Yeah, there we go. So, uh, what was your reaction to that? So, quite mixed, to be perfectly honest. I think, first and foremost, you know, I'm a low-tax Conservative. I actually believe in targeted tax interventions, so tax cuts that are specifically targeted to businesses, but also individuals. So, there are certain things that, you know, I would like to have seen happen that didn't happen. But if you look at the politics of today, and that's quite important, I think the Chancellor, I think Jeremy Hunt, has kind of like just nudged the door open a little bit. It's kind of like showing a little bit of leg, basically, um, in terms of that true Conservative narrative. We're low tax, you know, we want to give people more of their money. And the measures that he announced today, they don't go far enough, for, and mm. we'll talk about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. such as the cut to national insurance, that's important. And it's significant because he said he's going to bring it forward to January next year. And, of course, the public will start to feel the benefits of that by the spring next year as well. So you can read into all of that in whichever way you would like to, potentially in terms of the electoral politics as well for the government. So a couple of things there. Where would you like to have seen changes? Where would you like to have seen it go further? So I'm a great believer in unfreezing those tax thresholds. So it's known as fiscal drag. There are many... Many people on low incomes, basically, that get caught in, you know, that tax threshold that has been frozen, basically, the personal tax allowance threshold, and also the higher rate. So, for example, many of our public sector workers, you know, our police officers, our nurses and teachers, they now get caught in that fiscal drag, which basically means that more of their income mm. just gets hoovered up by the exchequer. And the evidence today is very clear. The OBR have published it all now anyway. So in the next... Well, this year alone, the Treasury will rake in something like £12 billion through fiscal drags. So that's more people paying the higher rates of taxation. Mm. And you could argue it's actually a tax increase without it being a direct tax increase on individuals in terms of the headline rate of tax. And by 2028... Mm. So, in a few years' time, basically, um, so many more people will be caught into, into that. Four million more lower workers will be. Three million more people will be paying the higher rate. And on top of that, the OBR have forecast that the government will rake in, wait for it, nearly £45 billion of extra revenue just through fiscal drag. And I think that's one area where changes should have been made. Could mm. still be made next year, don't rule that out. Could be made next year in the spring budget and would actually make a big difference to people um, having more money in their pockets. I mean, it does sound a little bit like you've identified quite a lot of negatives there. I mean, Labour might be quite happy with what you've just done there, do you think? Sure. Well, I was in the chamber today in Parliament speaking about this. Mm. Ironically, there were Labour MPs 
saying exactly the same thing. Mm. And they themselves are quoting from the OBR. Now, I don't think Labour would change that at all, quite frankly, because it's not, and it's not just about politics, OK? So the reality is we have to look at why the government is in the situation that it's in right now, has some fiscal headroom, made mm. cuts to business taxation, some of it's good. There's more, again, in the future that could be done. And obviously on national insurance. But we have to be very honest as well. State spending is at a record high. Government debt is very high. You know, we are trying to get that equation right Do you think right this could have been a Labour out. Party budget, really? Or Labour Party autumn statement? No, I don't. Definitely not. Mm. I think Labour would have taxed more. And also, I think there would have been higher levels of public spending. Now, you could argue, how can it get much higher? Well, under Labour, mm. it would. It is our job as Conservatives and I say this as a Conservative backbench MP, to, you know, hold the government's feet to fire to ensure that actually they are pursuing efficiencies when it comes to public spending, that actually they're not increasing public spending when they don't need to, and at the same time making sure we've got much more productivity in our economy, in our labour market, and ultimately trying to reduce the burden of taxation on businesses and on individuals. OK, well, look, it's interesting stuff about the autumn statement there. Uh, we have also seen, you know, there was this dramatic reshuffle that was got this time last week in a day mm. or two, wasn't it? Some rather familiar faces re rejoining the front benches. Yes. I'm showing a video here with Cameron, we've got James Cleverly, we've got Rishi Suna. Go, what, do you, what do you see when you look at that? What do you feel? Well... I was obviously in David Cameron's government um, yeah. back in 2014, 2015, and I actually was part of that national election campaign in 2015. I have a very significant amount of respect for David Cameron. You know, he, we went on to win a Conservative majority government in 2015, and I think he did a lot of good things, actually, back in the days of the coalition. Didn't feel like it at the time, by the way, because we were making tough and difficult decisions. Um, he, David Cameron is respected. Lord Cameron, I should now well, say. Well, yes, going to take some games. He, so. he is respected and he's a respected figure in the party. I think, however, though, speaking quite candidly, um, people would say, well, Rishi Sunak has tried to separate himself from the past. He's yeah. given speeches about that recently. And then, of course, he brings back former political figures when actually, I mean, there is this debate going on right now, Foreign Secretary that's not accountable to an elected chamber in Parliament. Now, I think, you know, that's, that's a topic of discussion and debate. But at the same time, it's a bit odd that, you know, the current Prime Minister could not find um, a foreign secretary from his own backbenches and chose that route. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all to Lord Cameron. David Cameron has well, many, many attributes and qualities, and I think he would be, you know, he's going, going to be very good in that role. Yeah, I mean, there is also the kind of Remain Brexit argument, isn't there, really? He's already come out and spoken a bit about... He's had to row back on this, about the foreign aid yes. discussion. Yeah. He was quite critical of Boris. They've always had... Uh, an interesting relationship. Sure. Uh, and it does feel to me as though maybe is the antithesis of what a lot of the 2019 Tory voters wanted. Of course, yeah. And, Patrick, I think you're right. You know, a week in politics is a long time, right? But actually, when you reflect back from 2019 to where we are right now, it feels like it's gone full circle, so to speak. And with that in mind, I mean, look, I take the view that, number one, we need to forget you know, the animosity, Brexit, leaving the EU, leave or remain. You know, I was on the Leave campaign. Mm. The, there was a lot of antagonism and animosity within our own party and government at the time. We need to forget all that and we need to really park all that. Our job collectively is to do what's in the best interest of our country. I do think it's quite interesting. I watched some of the debate in the House of Lords yesterday with Lord Cameron speaking around the new trade Brexit freedoms policies. Yeah. And, of course, it was very interesting to hear the context as to why CTPTP, the new yeah. trade deal coming forward, he was speaking about that, but actually not associating it directly and using the language that it is all because of Brexit. Yeah. And it's down to our Brexit freedoms. I just think everyone needs to be humble and move on, basically, and serve our country in a very, very focused, yeah. intelligent way. I hope is that the question's for Rishi, which he's going to have to deal with about who, who's pulling his strings. But, I, you know, I've got to ask as well, there was the Supreme Court ruling last mm. week, wasn't there, on Rwanda. James Cubley's the, the man in charge mm. of delivering this now. What do you think his chances are? So, James is actually my neighbour, my Essex neighbour. Yeah. In, in, so, he's the Member of Parliament for Braintree. And, you know, I've, I've already spoken to James. You know, I wish him every success in what is the toughest job in government. There's no doubt about that. 
You've asked about the Supreme Court, and I have to say I was quite cross listening to that judgment last week right. for very good reasons, because that judgment was very similar to the Court of Appeal judgment that came out in the summer. And to be very candid, listening to that judgment, I felt that the government could have done much more work to avoid that conclusion that the Supreme Court reached, which was very much based on this whole issue of refoulement, mm. that effectively if you send people to a third country, they could then be removed again to another country or their country of origin and subject to, you know, persecution, fear, torture, etc. Having been the architect of the Rwanda policy and the strategy and worked with the Rwandan government, Ivan went to meet the UNHCR people in Geneva, um, had some very good discussions with them, actually, and with the foreign minister mm. of Rwanda. I felt that the government really should have knuckled down over the last 12 months and addressed many of those concerns that the court raised. Of course, James Cleverley, our new Home Secretary, will have to address those issues. I've been speaking to him about some of that already, and I've been very open with him. I will, you know, if I can give him some yeah. insight, knowledge and support on that, I absolutely will. OK, well, interesting stuff. Um, now, look, I couldn't let you get going without asking a little bit about what's going on down under, OK? Mm. Because Nigel Farage is uh, competing in I'm a Celeb. And actually, this is it's kind of in your wheelhouse because it covers immigration as well, this latest <laughs> debate, right? So, it's quite topical, isn't it? it? Well, it is. It's almost <laughs> like we planned it. Of course, we didn't. Um, uh, the fellow campmate, Nella Rose, well, trying to tear strips off him. Let's just remind ourselves a little bit about what happened, OK? Right. So when sorry, all the tea is coming out now. So basically, but this is what I was saying. Because apparently you. you're anti-immigrants. And you're, who told you that? Oh, the who internet. Told, the oh internet. well, there we are. Then it must be true. It must be true. It must be. <laughs> it must be true. Okay, but then why don't black people like you? You'd be amazed. They do. Well, You'd be amazed. Nigel. If, if you came oh, with Nigel. me. If you came with me, if you, huh? came, if you came with me through South London, you'd be astonished. Oh, wow. What were you doing in South London, Nigel? Well, I'm there every day. Yeah, what do you make of that? <laughs> Do you know, I think they'll be best of friends by the time that show ends, actually. I think they'll probably get on quite well. Mm. Um, I think that's interesting for a start, you know, just those gut reactions about immigration and sort of how Nigel mm. was described, basically. Um, I thought Nigel respo his responses were pretty good in terms mm. of, you know, responding to Nella. But at the end of the day, it's inevitable. Nigel's gone into the jungle. He's going to be tested and asked about all sorts of things, from Brexit to migration. We know his views on this. Obviously, he's on GB constantly um, talking about those issues. So, you know, it's just, it's just interesting to see that. I take it, I take it you're, uh, you're not focused on entering the jungle anytime soon. No way. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. I actually haven't watched it yet this week, yeah. but I will because Nigel's on it. And obviously, you know, N N Nigel's a friend and, you know, I really wish him well. And I think he's going to do really well in the jungle. Did he win? He could do. He well, absolutely could do. Oh, there we go. Let's not rule it out. Let's not rule it out, love. Chrissy, thank you very much. You're always a tremendous sport as well. It's, it's great to pleasure. have you on, you know, wide ranging stuff. Hope to see you again very, very soon. That is wonderful Dame Pretty Patel. Thank you for joining us. Now, coming up, Anna Michalova, the deputy political editor of the Mail on Sunday, joins me live. Why? Well, because we've obviously got tonight's press pack, haven't we? We'll have a deep dive into tomorrow's front pages. You will be ahead of the game when it comes to news. You'll be ahead of all your mates. Don't miss out because there's some... Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5am. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5am, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens with our team of dedicated journalists across the UK. We're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're gonna give news they wanna hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard, I think there's a chance here. 
for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Tired of the usual focus-tested, pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's The Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Let's bring you tomorrow's news tonight now in the most entertaining pay-per-view you will get anywhere on the telly. The very first front pages have just been delivered for my press pack. I'm just getting in my ear. We've got another little Nigel gem to bring you shortly, but here we go on the front of the Metro. Happy NI year. Yes, Chancellor fires election starting gun. Surprise 2% cut from January to give a £27 million boost. This is the Metro. They're obviously leading on the autumn statement. Similar story in the eye. Biggest tax cut since the 1980s. Who are they kidding? Good news, national insurance slash. They rattle off a couple of good things, bad things. Highest tax burden since World War II. That's the independent. Yes, sorry, I should clarify that. Um, there is also something there from an individual whose daughter is still being held by Hamas. The Sun. A little bit on I'm a Celebrity at the top there. I'm a Celeb, Nella's rant at Fred. You cannot be serious, they say. Well, Nella's kicked off again, hasn't she? This time at Nigel. But they go off on the mini budget in January with a champagne bottle popping. £450 off national insurance payments, £18 a week rise in the state pension, and duty frozen on all your party booze. New Year's were hey, they say. Now the actual eye. Tax burden to hit record high despite 2p cut for millions. I mean, obviously, the political allegiances at play here. Um, they've broken it down as well with a variety of different political commentators on the inside of the book. We go over to The Guardian because we have to. Hunt reveals £20 billion in tax cuts as Tories move on to election footing. Actually, quite a soft front page a headline. from The Guardian there. Um, yeah. They also do have a picture story of uh, Israel Hamas. World awaits start of four-day truce and hostage release. Really an interesting smorgasbord of that. Um, look, very quickly, I'm going to zone in on The Guardian. I didn't think I'd say that. This is actually quite a neutral front page, mm. very neutral yes, front yeah. page, and potentially Matthew shows that... Wait, well, hey, did Jeremy Hunt get this right, then? Well, I mean, Labour hasn't opposed it. Labour's in favour of the cut in national insurance. Uh, but I think that, as the, uh, uh, as the eye says quite rightly, it reminds us, taxes are the highest that they've been uh, for 50 years, uh, or 40 years. At so, the Prime Minister, when they were... High. Absolutely. And, you know, you know uh, uh, and what's particularly galling is this idea that they've given us everybody a great present, when actually, it may be New Year way hey, but it's after yeah. they've gone up. So, you know... You can absolutely wrap it up. Look, I, I, I want to delve into something, if it's all right, with, what, with something that's on the internet side of the book, right? And this is in The Times, so you'll be able to get a good look at this tomorrow. The Times are reporting an internal fury at the BBC, with staff said to be fuming with Match of the Day presenter Gary Lineker after he shared and endorsed left-wing commentator Owen Jones's interview with an Israeli professor who accused Israel of, quote, textbook genocide. Jewish staff at the Beeb are said to be particularly uncomfortable. One employee is quoted as saying, it's pretty... 
uh, expletive for any Jew having mm. to work with quite a few folk here right now. Christine? Well, I honestly feel that all those years of heading the ball has, have done some into his brain, Lineker. <laughs> I mean, his massive, massive ego. Who does he think he is? Mm. He's paid for by the taxpayer. He's not supposed to indulge in political stuff. And I feel that he's the BBC's useful idiot, because we all know what the BBC think about all this. They refuse to call Hamas a terrorist, and they allow Lineker all this latitude, so he goes out and says things that they might want to say. But what he said was absolutely despicable. Is he unaware that there's been a 1,350% rise in anti-Semitism in this country well, he's certainly not in the last about month? It. I mean, he's certainly... it's appalling. He should be... vorderman has gone, he should mm. go immediately. OK, so you're calling for Gary Lineker to go immediately. Absolutely. I, I, I feel... Again, with Vord like Vorderman, he's become like a pantomime figure for the left. He knows he winds up the right, and I think he does it on purpose. This is a serious mis misjudgment what he's done mm. here. I don't want anyone cancelled, but he needs to be reined in. Um, mm. He's gone too far. Some, it's, 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 someone that I idolised as a boy, I cannot stand yeah. the man. So, he's, he's been reined in several times. There comes a time, mm. you know. Yeah, isn't he doing? When... Don't you think he's doing a Suella? Don't you think he's uh, desperately sort of goading the BBC into sacking him so that he can become a martyr uh, 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 for the left? Because look, it's not just the current BBC employees who are angry about this. I, I spent, you know, a dozen years in the BBC keeping my political views, which are there, uh, firmly under yeah. check. Um, and um, you know, he's just literally taking the Mickey here. Mm. Uh, uh, he you, thinks you know, he's godlike. The rules he apply to him. Messiah, well, yeah. well, as according to, and this is important that we mention the yeah. rules because the BBC's impartiality rules get brought up all the time. According to the BBC, this is as it stands. They say that they implemented new social media rules. I think that yeah. was in the wake of his 1930 Germany yes. comments. Yes. And they and say, Carol. they say, yeah, they say that he's not broken any of those rules. He's not under investigation. So he can tweet something out which says this is worth anyone's time, 13 minutes of anyone's time. You know, about, essentially, really, the, the, the Israeli state being responsible for a genocide, OK, put forward by... He's certainly not the most left-wing commentator at all, Owen Jones. He's, he's not. And he's actually, uh, I must say, genuinely, I'm not going to win any friends by saying this, behind, behind the scenes, Owen Jones is actually quite a nice guy, seriously. Um, but putting this out, you know... Uh, and he's and he's tweeting it. I mean, people could say you you're, you're endorsing him. But the BBC well, journalism is so carefully meant to be so carefully calibrated. And here's Lineker sitting in his million pound mansion, uh, retweeting away, probably having watched about three minutes of this 18 minute clip. But he just thinks that it's a good thing to do. And he, I'm amazed because I think quite clearly he has broken the new rules. Okay, you, he's got such a massive ego. I think the BBC has been yes. corrupted right. by its own wokeness. And if, if you were a Jew working within the BBC, my goodness, how would you feel? Look quickly. We've got another Nigel Farage clip from the jungle, and all it says here is Nigel versus Rat. This is the rubbish sack. Is that a little hole in the corner of it? You're joking? No. Something being gnawing at it? Yeah, someone's had a gnaw at that. Oh, my God. That's bloody stupid. It all got a bit slack. It all got a bit slovenly, uh, leading to an error, which was the food bag being left out overnight, which clearly had been attacked by vermin of some kind. That wasn't very clever. Everything else was done, apart from that. Well, 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 Nigel not happy with the state of the camp and not afraid to say it as well. Coming up, though, the French have allowed a Calais migrant police officer to go on sick leave for 14 years. So are they actively seeking to wreak havoc on our borders? My panel will thrash that one out in tonight's Greatest Britain and Union Jackass. And Anna Mikhailova, the deputy political editor at The Mail on Sunday, joins me live to give her expert opinion on some more of tomorrow's front pages. You won't want to miss it. See you in a tick. Who is it? We're here for the show. Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour, with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? <laughs> I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News. 
tired of the usual focus tested pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Time to get stuck into more of tomorrow's front pages. And with me is Deputy Political Editor at the Mail on Sunday. It's Anna Mikhailova. Anna, thank you very, very much. Um, like, where to start? So we've got the Telegraph, the Daily Telegraph, biggest tax cut since the 1980s. And they also have uh, analysis by Camilla Tomine of this parish. With a wave of his magic wand, Hunter's finally taken the fight to Labour. But I will go to the Mail. Biggest tax cut since the 1980s. Literally the same headline. Let's hope it's just the start. Your views. We well, I that? think number 10 are going to be delighted with this crop of front pages. We've got The Sun, we've got um, The Times, everyone, even as you pointed out earlier, The Guardian is pretty positive. And I think the key thing here isn't the fact that, yes, the tax burden is still going to be high, but finally we've got a bit of direction from number 10 and from the Treasury of what Rishi Sunak is actually about. And they're setting out their stall ahead of, obviously, an election where they're saying they really they they want people to start working again they want the economy to start growing so the cuts that we've seen are specifically directed to try and get people back into the workforce mm. this is something that rishi sunak has been personally very concerned about for a while now that a lot of people had dropped out of the working um uh, of the working world and and everything he, they've done is essentially targeted at that. So it, the business rate, you know, biggest business cuts um, in, in decades and, of course, the cuts to national insurance. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see whether or not this pales into insignificance tomorrow when those net migration figures do land. But, you know, £27 million to save an average of £450 on NI a year. All right. £11 billion tax breaks for businesses. State pension rise by 8.5%. I mean, the living wage is going up as well. And, and only the, the people who, I think my take on it would be, are absolutely, completely and utterly bone idle are at risk of losing their benefits. It's not really a bad statement, is it, really? Yeah, I, th I think they, um, it was generally received as, as, as pretty well, I mean, in Westminster today. And MPs, crucially, are happy. So even, even some of Sunak's fiercest critics, so the Liz Truss, um, the Liz Truss group, who warned that they were, they, they were even threatened to start voting down the, the autumn statement, they formally accepted mm -hmm. that they're happy, um, they think it's the right direction of travel. So overall, but I think what we're seeing here, crucially, is clarity and a real dividing line with Labour. So it's, it's saying this is what Rishi Sunak is, is going to be about. And as the mail says, you know, let's hope this is just the start because the tax burden is rising hugely. So many people are being dragged into the tax net. But... You know, bear in mind, inflation has only started falling. So if you take them on their word, they're waiting for that to fall further. And then hopefully in the spring statement, there'll be even more cuts, hopefully even an income tax cut. Yeah, well, yeah, chance to be a fine thing, wouldn't it? But uh, just, I've just got time to squeeze one more in with you. Thank you for this. The Times is reporting today, this is inside the book, that people with lower cognitive ability have been found more likely to have voted for Brexit. It comes from the University of Bath essentially, or Bath, if you, you know, got higher cognitive ability and voted Remain, I suppose. Um, and uh, what do you make of that? 
I mean, this is this is the boffins biting back. I think. Why would you even run this kind of study? Frankly, it's it's the kind of patronising attitude that made people vote for Brexit in the first place. You know, pe people in London and in the, uh, in, 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 around around the um, uh, dinner table saying that, frankly. Only stupid people want to vote for Brexit. It's, it's simply not true. And this study, what it's trying to say um, is that there was more misinformation in the campaign and that people uh, who voted Brexit were more likely to fall for it. But again, I, I'm not convinced. And there's, there are huge questions about how they've worked this out. Yeah, Anna, thank you very, very much. Real pleasure to have you on, and I hope to have you on for a little bit longer next time as well. Anna McKell over there of the Mail on Sunday. And it is time now to reveal today's greatest Britain and Union jackass. OK, Christine, you take it away with your greatest Britain. Well, my greatest Britain is Kemi Badenoch because she has fought within government and won for much, much stricter rules on pupils in schools identifying as the opposite gender. And she is going to be far more difficult and the parents must be told. So she has fought for common sense and won. So Kemi Badenoch. OK, I'll go on. And... Mine is a very inspirational guy that I met last Friday, a guy called Farron, Farron Paul. He's a guy that is taking knives and machetes off of gang members on the streets of London, um, sometimes offering them JD sports vouchers, taking them off the streets, and he hands them into the police station. He's took hundreds of knives off the streets of London, and he needs mm. to be commended for it and supported. I must say, that's a strong start, you two. Go on, Matthew. Drag it into I'm the not going to win, but I'm sure. I'm, can I get to the end? Of the, can I get to the end today, this week? Yes. Um, my uh, greatest Britain are the patriotic millionaires group uh, who put in country before personal gain by calling for higher taxes for the super rich, for multi multi millionaires like themselves. And they, as we can see, they cheekily uh, projected their demands onto the front of the Bank of England and the Treasury. That is a way of showing off that they're millionaires. I'm telling you, that is a way. Anyway, right, we won't, we won't get into that. Right, tonight's greatest Britain is. Farron Paul, there we go. So, well done uh, to him and well done, Adam. We've just about got time for the Union Jackass, Christine. Well, mine is honorary and it's the French. Because <laughs> they... they... Calm down. <laughs> they are allowing... First the Belgians, now the French. They... Do this. Listen, quiet, we haven't got long. They are allowing somebody called Luke Noel Larcher, who is the head of a police unit which is supposed to be stopping the migrants coming onto the boats. Yeah. We are paying 100... No, it isn't. It's um, 500 million over three years to the French to stop the boats. <laughs> and the head of the unit has been absent... Listen! ..has been absent for 14 years. He is playing golf and swimming. So w they're mad. They're doing this. They're cocking a snoop. They're taking our money and they are not right. doing the business. The right. French. Adam. Mine is the <laughs> Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt for not listening to hospitality and cutting VAT and not understanding small businesses at all. He has just presided over tens of thousands of businesses going bust in the next six months, in my opinion. OK, Matthew. And uh, mine is Lancashire Police, who've been brought to book by the Independent Inquiry mm. for the failings uh, uh, over the investigation into the awful murder uh, uh, of young mum, Nicola Bully. They brought in irrelevant details of a private life, which they shouldn't, mm. and they've been, uh, they've, been, they've been found bang to rights on that. Uh, actually, again, genuinely, that is um, a very, very strong contender. It's the French. <laughs> It was always going to be the French. Of course it was the French. Fantastic stuff. Yes, well done, Christine. The French, they are this week's honorary union jackass for letting a bloke who was supposed to be in charge of their borders taking the sick for 14 years. I mean, that by anyone's standard. Unbelievable. And also, Christine's passionate, passionate. Oh, you sold there. it. I'll be honest I mean, with you. I'll be whatever honest you with think. You, you sold it. <laughs> right, OK. Um, well, look, thank you very, very much. Wonderful panel, wonderful thank show. You. We went out absolutely loads, and we will be ready to re-enter the fray again from 9pm tomorrow. But for more on all of these bumper pages, it's Headliners, and that's next. I'll see you at 9. Good evening, I'm Alex Deakin. This is your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. The wind's picking up a bit tonight and tomorrow, particularly so across the north. Largely dry in the south tomorrow, but it's going to turn colder 
for all of us by Friday. Still got high pressure nearby to the southwest, but this cold front will be introducing the colder air as the isobars squeeze together, the winds picking up. A very blustery night across northern Scotland, particularly so in the Northern Isles. Got a wet night for the Highlands, and that rain slowly edging south across the Western Isles. Further south, some patchy rain over the hills of southern Scotland and northern England, but many places will be dry. The breeze and the cloud will help to keep the temperatures up, so a, a milder night than of late. But it is going to turn colder. Uh, initially tomorrow across Scotland, so there'll be some sunny spells developing, but there'll be blustery showers across the far north. A, a wet morning through the central belt, that rain spreading south into Northern Ireland, eventually into Northern England. But a, a good part of England and Wales again looking dry. Some sunshine across parts of the south and east, easily seeing temperatures up to 12, maybe 13 Celsius. But there's the colder air, single digits and feeling even colder with the wind across Scotland. And the colder air spreads south for uh, Friday, some patchy rain in the southwest, showers coming into the northeast. They'll be wintry in nature, some sleet and snow even to lower levels. For many, though, Friday will just be a, a bright, crisp day. But uh, you will notice that drop in temperatures, single figures, and feeling even colder in the east with the wind. Who is it? We're here for the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> uh, CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays at 9 on GB News. We're here for the show. Welcome to the Dinosaur Hour with me, John Cleese. <laughs> I was uh, married to a therapist. And you survived? I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. <laughs> you interviewed Saddam Hussein. What's that like? I was terrified. I'm playing strip poker with these three. Oh! No, thank you. <laughs> CDs need to be put in alphabetical order. Ah. Uh, Are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> the Dinosaur Hour. Sundays on GB News.